Hey, what's happening, everybody? Uh, welcome back, uh, Matthew Waddy's channel. Uh, coming back with the series four of the WWE Mattel Retro line. So, with series four, once again, we're only looking at four figures from this particular series. It's actually, in my opinion, one of the more popular series, I think, because, well, for starters, the figures are crazy expensive. Uh, I don't own any of the loose figures for this series, so all the figures we're going to look at are carded. And as a matter of fact, kind of looking at this setup here, these are actually some of the most expensive figures that I acquired. And uh, there's one figure in particular in this series that you found in Hasbro. And the Hasbro figure is considered one of the worst figures all the time. Not even the worst figure of that particular character, but just a horrible figure. Me personally, I didn't really see too much wrong with it. Only the body pose, which I didn't like, but I, I again, I'm, I'm different in a lot of ways uh, as far as looking at certain figures like uh, LJ and Rick Rude, which I like, and I think most people despise the figure. But uh, And you guys pretty much know exactly what, which character I'm talking about because... When you think about it, what did Hasbro make that was absolute trash and that the Mattel Retros that was absolutely amazing? A pretty obvious answer there, but uh, he will be number two that we talk about in this particular series. Uh, so, uh, the first one we want to talk about is Finn Balor. Now, I've never seen Finn Balor wrestle, and... And I'm sorry that I don't have any loose figures to show you uh, for these particular characters. And uh, again, I think if I go out right now on eBay and try to buy them loose, you're probably looking at anywhere between $50 to $125 for any of these figures loose. And I absolutely refuse to pay that kind of money for, for those type of figures. If I go out and purchase like 20 figures, 20 loose figures for, for a bundle for like $300 or something, that's a different story. But... You're talking a mad amount of money for a, a single figure. I can't do it. Um, right now, if I were to get like a junkyard dog loose for like forty dollars, that's a different because I know the value there. But again, junkyard dogs know those guys who are going to be absolute astonishing amount of money, a ridiculous amount. Uh, the Demon King Finn Balor. I, I don't know anything about this guy, but I've seen so many of his action figures, and they always have some of the most cool-looking figures. Um, what's the one that I saw before? I think it was from Zombies, and I don't know if I have one here that I can really pull out real quick that I just thought was so awesome, and uh, I mean, if I sit there and, and, and yank each box out, I'll find it, but... Uh, here he is. From the Mattel Zombies. Uh, that one was one of my favorites. And what do I say? I think Finn Balor is one of those guys that have some of the most amazing action figures. I would love to have a legitimate LJN of Finn Balor. Give me an LJN 8-inch figure of this guy. That would be killer. As awesome as I love the look of the figure, it's straight up trash though. And what are we talking about? That stupid fuse legs with, and the fuse legs I can live with. The hands in like this. That is what destroys the figures. Uh, just to kind of backtrack, uh, Sting and Triple H in Series 2. We saw Seth Rollins and Goldberg in Series 3. And now we're looking at Finn Balor here in Series 4. Throughout the first three series, that's 25% of figures you saw with this pose and then you're throwing another figure in series four I don't get it and I said in the last video you're gonna see this pose often enough Mattel they recycle these figures more than Hasbro at least Hasbro had a ton of different characters with, with a ton of different poses and recycled the bodies these guys I think they only stick to about four I want to say four or five uh, body poses and this one please just eliminate it get rid of it just trash that mold you don't need it otherwise you know this would have been an awesome figure would have been one of my favorites the pose kills it for me look up here on the i don't know if you guys can see it really well or if the uh 
yeah, I, I think that darkness, it's going to be really hard for you guys to make out. Hopefully you can see it. But, I don't know, he kind of looks like a witch doctor or something in that photo. So I think that looks really solid. Like I said, it, it, aesthetically, it looks incredible. It's just, um, that particular pose just kills me. Alright, so, the one figure that I'm pretty sure any Hasbro fan back in the 90s was dying to, to redo. And Mattel Retros did a fantastic job recreating the proper Ric Flair action figure. So, again, they kind of stick with the same body type that a couple other guys have had. And that's perfectly fine. You know, they give him his infamous blue trunks and stuff. Very reminiscent to your your kind of Galoob Series 1 version of uh, Ric Flair. Overall quality figure. Uh, this one, I think, was a, was a little bit bent. I'm trying to see if it's like if it's bent around the corners or maybe the bubble was coming loose or something. So when I bought the figure, I think I paid like a hundred bucks for it, and uh, I, I think the, uh, that's the only reason why I got it so cheap <laughs> uh, is because it had those issues. But a carded Ric Flair, even you know, last January or the previous uh, December. When I was trying to purchase this guy, because he was one of the last figures I needed, uh, I was constantly coming across Ric Flair on card for like $150 or more, and it was crazy. Today, I'm trying to buy a loose Ric Flair, and you're, you're, you're seeing the loose figure sell for, you know, $75 on auction to $100, $125 loose, and I'm like, that's insane. I can't pay $100 on a loose Ric Flair when I already have a carded Ric Flair for 100 bucks. And it makes me sick that these figures, even if you look at the Mattel creations today, when they come out, when you pre-order them, or when they do come out and you order them, you get a, a complete set of four figures for around $60. So, you're looking at about $15 per box set. So, what I've said, I've these figures were like five bucks. I, I don't think that's necessarily what the price tag originally was. I think when you went to stores like Five Below or something and you saw that $5 price tag, that's because they had an overabundance of figures and they couldn't sell them. Uh, as my friend Kirk likes to say, they were peg warmers. And uh, Ric Flair, man. I want, this is one of the few figures in this line that I actually want a, a loose figure because of not only nostalgia, but because of the value of the figure and of course the playability which is absolutely amazing now the rick flair from series six and hasbro you know which is mimicked after the series one ravishing rick rude or later on the series 11 uh green carded one two three kid has probably my least favorite fighting pose ever but when you look at like finn balor and seth rollins and, and goldberg and all those guys that pose might actually be even worse and uh at least the you know the, the the punching motion you give him in a headlock and you start punching him. at least that's kind of fun you know but um so here in series four they still have the little stands for the figures which is awesome because as you guys know in later series uh, they did away with the stands that kind of sucks I don't care much uh, about the apps or anything like that you know unlocking superstars on the Apple Store and, and Google Play and all that. That, that means nothing to me, but the uh, the stands, I, I think the stands alone are probably going to be valuable over time, if they're not already. Much better with the Ric Rick Flair. And this series, it kind of reminisces of Series 3 so far. You have one character that I actually knew from childhood. In Series 3, it was Goldberg. In Series 4, it's Ric Flair. Where the other three guys, I, I really don't know anything about, you know, because I don't have that history. A lot of wrestlers whose names, like uh, Sami Zayn as an example. I know Sami Zayn because I collected Mattel Retros. I know Kevin Owens because of the Mattel Retros. Finn Balor because of the Retros, etc. I've learned about figures, or learned characters' names, not from watching wrestling, but from collecting you know, respective toy lines. So, uh, Finn Balor, I know, is expensive. I know that figure, from when I purchased him, he was probably 
fifty to one hundred fifty dollars. I don't have an exact price, you know, price tag on each figure because a lot of these figures I bought in abundance. Some of them I bought while I was on deployment, and I, I don't remember the price on every figure. It's hard to do that. Uh, I can only give you an estimate, and that's why I, a lot of these figures I'm going to put in the one in the fifty to one hundred fifty dollar price range. You know, it could have been fifty-one dollars. It could have been one hundred twenty-four dollars. I don't remember. But all four of these figures in this series were way up there in price. Uh, Sami Zayn, again, he's another one of those characters. He was one of the last figures I purchased, and he may have been the very last. I, I don't remember for sure. Now he he probably wasn't the last, but uh, second to last, fifth to last. I don't know. A very coveted figure, and probably fifty to one hundred dollars or more expensive. Uh, this figure, I don't have him loose, like I said, but based on the body type, I know exactly what kind of type this is, and this one is absolute trash. Um, if you get the Nikolai Volkov figure from Wave One, no, I'm sorry, uh, Wave Two, he was in the uh, Wave Two with the with the Heart Foundation. So Nikolai Volkov, you kind of tap the bottom of the foot and the leg kind of shoots up like that. You also see that in like the Shawn Michaels figures. And you know there are, I think uh, Hulk Hogan from Ringside Collectibles has that. You, you, you barely tap the foot and it just shoots right up. You can't really push the leg down. So if you're a kid and you want to play with that, that leg keeps popping up. It's horrible. That's another one. I keep hating on the stupid arms in fused legs pose but that is another horrible horrible design if this is all you're getting like if i look at this and on card this is an absolutely brilliant figure um i take if i were to take this out and actually hold it in my hand i would want to throw it against the wall it, it's just so annoying nikolai volkov he has the hat great i would have been nice if he had like the ussr shirt or something on the figure is fine, and I liked it a lot. I got the second one because I wanted a loose figure, and it's just not worth it. Uh, Sam Zayn, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. I know I paid up a big time for it, and on here it says five below, five dollars. The store five below, for those who uh, don't know. Um, those store stickers, they mean a lot to collectors as much as anything else. I mean, I personally would, would prefer a clean card. But, again, just kind of seeing not only the stores that sold the item, but what they sold it for, what they were once selling for. It's so frustrating when you look at that and you're like, hey. Or you look at like a Ultimate Warrior LJN on card. And you're like, okay, back in the day, this was a $17 figure or whatnot. And today, that figure is worth $8,000. It's insane. Uh, the last figure we're looking at, and even though this is the fourth series, we're already looking at the second figure of this character. And it's Kevin Owens. I think either Kevin Owens figure is going to be valuable, but I think this respective uh, Kevin Owens is going to be uh, far more expensive. The one that says, uh, fight the fight. Is that what he says? No, I'm sorry. Fight Owens fight. Fight the fight? <laughs> fight Owens fight on the t-shirt, whereas the last one in uh, series one, it just said KO on his shirt. And... Um, if I'm not mistaken, just kind of looking at it, it looks like it's the exact same body pose as the first one. <sighs> Good. It's, it's positive and negative in, in that respect. The positive is it's already one, if not my favorite fighting pose from the Mattel Retro line. So that that's a solid. But the negative is if you're going to you know do a repaint on a figure or recreate a new, uh, new figure for a character... I would much prefer them to have a completely different body type. Like, uh, I don't know, Dean Ambrose or, or you know something like that. Even the John Cena or Ultimate Warrior type body pose with the, the stomach and the, uh, the chest kind of being separated. Just give it a different pose. 
I can't be mad at it because it has my favorite f uh, figure fighting pose from the line. But again, I'm I'm kind of I'm on the uh, I'm on the border of each side. So sometimes I say there's no there's no middle. You're either for it or you're against it. This one I, I really can't make a decision on. But uh, this is the Kevin Owens from Series Four. Uh, series 4, as I mentioned, only consists of four figures. Again, continuing the trend from here on out. Four figures per line. Uh, series 4 is also the third of four releases in the year 2017. So, uh, this is the end of the second video today. I'm going to make one more video. And I'll probably stop at five uh, for, for today. And, well, stop at three videos today. Five videos total. And, um... So far, I've only posted the first video, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm, the goal is to kind of get it out every other day, so it won't be two days past, post on the third day, it'll be one day past, post on the second day, so, and uh, I'm going to look at video or series five, and uh, hopefully, uh, I don't remember what series five was, I, I really don't remember the breakdown for any of these series, so even though I've, I've owned them forever, well, maybe not ever, but I've owned them for over a year. I kind of feel like uh, I'm still seeing them for the first time. Nowadays, they're kind of hidden behind my door in the, in the storage room, so I don't even have the Mattel retros, you know, in my main in my main basement with all of my other displays. So that kind of sucks. If I ever find this place to put them, I mean, I, I'll definitely love to get them, ha you know, hung up somewhere. But uh, that's it for now, guys. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.